Hello, and welcome to this question and answer video. Here, I pulled questions out of my October 17th live training called Confluence for Project Managers. Check out the link somewhere up here to see the whole thing. We're going to dig into Confluence Cloud Premium to see the answers to these questions. So let's jump in and get started. The first question I got was about meeting notes. This is a template that comes preloaded in Confluence that I use in almost every meeting I sit in. I really like it because it's very easy to quickly spin up and take meetings. So first, I'm going to jump in and show you how to use the template and talk through some modifications I like to make, and then I'll explain how I use it during meetings. Here we are in Confluence Cloud Premium, and I'm going to go to the space I created in the training called Engineering Team jQuil 2. All I'm going to do to make a new meeting notes is click Create and click on Page. Now, if I happen to have a place to store it like this meeting notes folder, which I'll touch on in a follow-up question, I could also click create and click page right from here. This will give me a blank page. Then I'll want to click on all templates at the bottom and just search for my meeting notes template. Now this is a blueprint. It's available in every copy of Confluence Cloud Premium by default. So if you don't see it, talk to your space administrator to turn it on. You'll notice that I've started though, because I really like using it. This makes it easier to find if I click on my templates. I'll click on it to load it onto the page. And here I quickly have a formatted page to take meeting notes. Frequently, I will do this as soon as a meeting starts and quickly add the participants by doing something like at mentioning a name, for example, Andrew. Next, I'll start filling in the discussion topics. Typically, I don't record the time, so I'll just delete it or the presenter. This is my own personal preference though. I've actually gone in and modified the template so these just don't even exist. From here, I'll just add information in the item and notes column as the meeting progresses to capture that information. Now even better at the bottom, there's a whole section for action items which I can record as well as decisions. Check out my other videos on action items and decisions to see how these are used. Now the question I got about meeting notes is do I have one meeting note per meeting or do I keep one page and then just keep adding to it as more meetings happen? For example, adding something down here. My personal preference is to have one meeting note per meeting. If you look over on the left in the meeting notes folder, you'll see there's a kickoff call on the 17th. Once I save this, there'll be another meeting on the 22nd. So as I go, I can quickly and easily see when meetings happened. Even better, if I go through and add labels to these meeting notes by clicking the L key or by scrolling to the bottom, I can add labels to help me search and find these meeting notes even more effectively. If I have a single page, I find it tends to become a big wall of text that I have to command find or scroll down, making it a little bit harder to use. So my preference is one note per meeting. Now if there's a big meeting coming up, for example, I know that kickoff is coming, I might start this ahead of time. So when I go into the meeting, it's already formatted and ready to go, so I don't have to worry about adding participants, goals, or other things. The next question I got was, how can I use whiteboards as a project manager? Well, there's a couple of ways. Let's jump in and see. Here we are back in our Confluence Cloud Premium instance, and I'm going to go to a whiteboard that I used in the live training as an example. Now, there are many ways to use whiteboards. For example, people can vote on specific things, and then I can see results on it. So if I have ideas that I want to pass around, they can quickly provide their feedback. I also might have people add their own sticky note with their ideas about the project, maybe how we should move forward or overcome challenges, and then we can group them in a live session. Or here, I've pulled in a Confluence page that we can then group. Maybe this is documentation or project ideas. And here I have JIRA tickets that I've pulled in. Maybe there's already bugs that I have to track or cluster by root cause or something else. I can quickly visually see what's going on. There are many ways to use whiteboards though. Think of it as a replacement for standing around everyone all together in a meeting room. So I'll challenge you to pop open whiteboards and see different ways you can brainstorm. There are, however, other ways, for example, system diagrams or process flows that I've used whiteboards for. I'll do my best to post some links up here so you can see them. But again, this is a great digital space for mapping out different things. The next question I had was, how do I integrate whiteboards into pages? At first glance, you can't easily put a whiteboard on a page, but there is a way. Popping back into Confluence, here I have my whiteboard. I'm going to go to the meeting notes I created earlier and pretend that that whiteboard was critical to this meeting. I'm going to click Edit, and I'm just going to find some open space on this page. For this example, I'll put it under Goals. Next, I'm just going to grab the link to that whiteboard. I'm going to copy it and paste it right onto the page. And you'll notice that Confluence has inserted it. I can see the actual whiteboard and I can actually click and drag and move around. I can even click on links within the whiteboard to open them. 
Now this is done because Confluence interprets links and they can do it by embedding the page. So this works for other pages. Imagine a dashboard or something else. You could, however, choose to shrink it down to an inline. So just show the name of it. Or you might even just show the actual hyperlink. However, for something like a whiteboard, I tend to embed it. So when folks look at this page, they can see the same visual information that they would see if they went to the whiteboard itself. So that is a very quick way to integrate whiteboards. Just copy the URL and paste it right into your page. I also got a lot of questions about managing content. And this one is how do I move pages to a different space? Imagine you took meeting notes in your own personal space, and then you realized you put them in the wrong spot. Now here I'm in my own personal space, and maybe I've realized that my project example page is in the wrong spot. To move it, I'll just click more actions and click move. Now this does require permissions in the space I want to move it into. So if I don't have the ability to make a page in engineering team jQuill 2, I won't be able to do this. So if you run into that challenge, talk to your space administrator. However, here I can just click and drag and drop it under maybe page owner tracking and then click move. And this will move that piece of content into the new space. And the really neat thing is any hyperlinks that went to this page will still work. Even though it has a new link because it's a new space, if someone had saved or bookmarked or emailed that hyperlink somewhere else, it would still come to this exact page. So that's the quickest way to move them between spaces. Within a space, you can just click and drag and then drop it under its new parent. So you can quickly manage your content. I will always encourage you to take a few minutes every week or every month to make sure your content is organized. It will make it much easier for your team and you to find everything. Another content related question is what are folders for? Folders are a relatively recent addition to Confluence. Before folders, if I wanted to organize content, I would have to make a page called, say, meeting notes, and then put all my meeting notes under it. This would result in a page that was essentially blank. It was useless. It was a placeholder. The only thing it did was serve to organize other pages. Now, however, I can add a folder, and I have one here for my meeting notes. You'll notice if I click on it, there's no content. It is just a container for other pages, in this case, all of the meeting notes for this particular project. So folders are not a piece of content. They're a way that I can more easily organize what I do have. So folks don't have to struggle or wonder why there's a big blank page with nothing on it. And in the theme of organizing content, someone asked, how should I organize my content? And this is a wonderful question. There isn't really a wrong way to organize content. That said, there will be some ways that might work better. In the examples I've shown, I have a meeting notes folder. This makes it easier for me to find meeting notes. Another way I could do that though, would be to add a label called meeting note to all the meeting notes, and then use a macro to pull those onto a single page. The best advice I can give you is whichever organizational structure you choose, make sure you are consistent. Make sure you take time to come back into Confluence and make sure it lines up with the organizational pattern you have chosen. This way your team will know what to expect. For example, if you have decided to have a space for your project, make sure everything is in that space. If you have started using labels to easily organize and manage content, make sure you are consistently applying them. So be sure to block off some time every so often to go through and make sure your setup is matching your needs. Those were some of the questions I got in that live training. Make sure you check out the whole thing. There's a lot of other great information in there beyond just these questions. If you like this, I really hope you subscribe and like it, but also drop your comments with the questions you have on how you can use Confluence to better support your projects or better serve your team. I really appreciate you taking time to learn with me, and I really look forward to seeing you in another one of these again soon.